Ah, life is a series of hellos and goodbyes. Fortunately, it's time for hello. What's up everybody, BC Amplified. The 30th of January, 2017, that Monday Night Raw, it's in the books. And we're not gonna do any clickbait, make you wait till later. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about exactly what the title says. Sasha Banks, the, the heel turn is on, right? And after last night, it's full throttle. We've known for several weeks now that they've been toying around with the idea of turning Sasha back heel. And now it looks like they're gonna go full throttle with it after last night. They're doing they're playing up the storyline where Sasha Banks is basically obsessed with uh, you know not being defeated and taking on Nia Jax and defeating her. And they played the storyline where Bailey is trying to be the chipper good friend who's kind of like, you know, you don't have to do this. You're already the boss, you've already been a champion, just don't do it. And Sasha Banks looked at Bailey. And she basically said, you know, some of us, I forgot exactly what she said, but paraphrasing, she basically said, not all, you know, some of us actually care if we win or lose. You know what I mean? And that was badass. Again, that wasn't the exact quote, but that's exactly what she was alluding to. And uh, I thought that was so badass. She walked out of the trainer's room because she was getting help on her uh, leg. And Bailey was just staring out like, all right, like that was unnecessary. So they already planted the seed. Sasha Banks ended up going out to the ring. Nia Jax destroyed her again. I love this booking. As a huge Sasha Banks fan, I feel this is exactly, this is only gonna help Banks' character, and we're already starting to see that with the heel turn, and it's only gonna help Nia Jax, um, you, you know, for something that's long overdue for Nia Jax, and that's finally making her a fucking legit heel, a legit female competitor on that roster. She needed that one big push. The squash matches were only gonna take you so far. This is perfect for Nia Jax, but for Sasha it is as well. So then they, uh, they showed a backstage clip of Bailey helping Sasha Banks back into the trainer's room. I fully anticipate this relationship to end up like the mega powers. Remember Macho Man Randy Savage and Hulk Hogan <laughs> back in uh, around WrestleMania 5, right before Mania 5. Hogan and Savage, they kind of reminded me of like the Bailey and Sasha, you know, the good friends, and, but one of them just started getting annoyed with the other. That was Randy Savage. He started getting annoyed with Hulk Hogan. And in the trainer's room, he actually, st he jumped Hulk Hogan because he thought Hulk Hogan was, you know, making moves on Elizabeth, his girl. So obviously way different storyline here, but along the same lines as far as, you know, good friends, about one just getting annoyed with the other and one is about to snap on the other. And that one is gonna be Sasha Banks. So again, they've been toying with this for weeks now. And just recently, I've been hearing a lot more that they're actually gonna go with it. But until I saw anything concrete, I didn't wanna mention anything. Last night, we finally saw the seeds planted. I think by fast lane, you're gonna see a full turn by Sasha Banks. Makes perfect sense. But where do you go at WrestleMania? Obviously, they wanna have the best friends clash, right? Bailey versus Sasha Banks at Mania is looks like where, where they're going. So does that mean that these two would not be in Charlotte's title picture? Would that mean like an Asuka versus Charlotte or something along those lines, something bigger? Who knows? The one thing I do know is if you just have Sasha versus Bailey, that kind of concerns me because would that be on the main show for Mania? Because that means you would have to have three women's matches, the SmackDown Women's Championship, the Raw, and then an exhibition match between these two. Would they put three women's match on one WrestleMania card? It's possible. It is in Orlando. That's performance center country. So they want to, uh, you know, showcase all the old NXT stars. But what I would do, and I'm not a big fan of triple threats, and we just saw one recently with Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, and Charlotte, but I I'm fine with Bailey, Charlotte, and Sasha Banks, triple threat, or even a f fatal four-way if you want to add on a fourth one. I think they would really put on an epic uh, showcase at Mania. But it looks like it's going to be Sasha Banks, is, Sasha Banks is going into Mania as a heel, and I'm okay with that. Two things that would make Sasha Banks epic, right? Sasha Banks as a heel, and Sasha Banks on SmackDown. So at least it looks like we're going to get one of them. It already started last night. Sasha Banks is already getting annoyed with Bailey. I look for that to continue um, because Sasha Banks just he, she plays that heel character so well, and Bailey is just that ultimate face. You know what I mean? That chipper, happy-go-lucky character. Everything Banks is not. So we're gonna get into some of the negatives now. The only way to really do that is to take it to 2.0. So take it away, 2.0.
Well, gee, thank you. And by the way, I'm not all just about negatives. Thank you very much. I see positives in things as well. I just tell the truth. That's something, that's a lost art in today's society, right? I call it like I see it. Fuck PC, fuck PG. I tell the truth. People can't handle it too bad. You want to call it negatives, it's negatives. But I see positives as well. Like, for instance, when Mustafa got beat by Tony Nese last night and Austin Aries interviewed Nice, right? And he fucking was jabbing Nice, trying to get personality out of him. And he's pretty much had to just walk away because he has no fucking personality. And Austin Aries was just fucking grinning like, yeah, I'm going to get under this guy. I thought that was awesome because we all know that's the one big thing the cruiserweights are lacking. Personality. Somebody get a fucking personality. And I, I love fucking Austin Aries jabbing out Tony Nice. Hopefully fucking A, Nice gets a personality and hope this is a, and number two, I hope this is a shot in the cruiserweight division's ass to get that division really fucking rocking. It was a huge night for that division on Sunday when never won the championship. And I thought it was an awesome moment with, awesome moment with Austin Aries and Tony Nice last night. So there's a fucking positive, right? And you want to talk fucking, uh, what wasn't a fucking positive is that six mixed tag match last night, Bailey, Cesaro, and Sheamus versus Charlotte, Gallows, and Anderson. I, I do not, I can't stand when people watch a match and say, oh, this person is just nothing but botches, or I watch that match, and if you watch it, there's two to three botches every match that they have. Fuck out of here. You're a fucking botch, motherfucker. Now, last night, it was hard to not even think about botches with that six-person tag match, man. If you go back and watch that match, Bailey, Sheamus, Cesaro, Charlotte, Gallows, and Anderson, the whole match was a fucking botch. Every single fucking thing that Cesaro and Anderson did in the ring was a botch. That was just a full fucking botch. Anderson was off his game, absolutely. Cesaro still looks like he was fucking dizzy from spinning around Sunday night. That whole match was a mess. Um, Bailey was off too. Everybody was just off. Charlotte wasn't with it. I think they were all having rumble lag. Um, same as jet lag, it was rumble lag. Maybe it was both. I don't know. But that fucking mixed tag match, whatever, it was horrible. Um, just, wow, I've never watched a match and just when it ended thought, wow, that was full of botches. This was the first time that actually fucking happened. That was absolutely tragic. Not as tragic as what we're going to see at WrestleMania, right? When Goldberg takes on fucking Lesnar, because Goldberg came out last night with Paul Heyman and said, we want Goldberg. And they both pointed at the sign. How fucking corny was it to see Lesnar pointing at a sign? The fucking beast points at a sign now. I mean, what? What are we doing booking-wise with the biggest beast that we have, right? Fucking tragic. The build, I can't wait for the build, guys. I'm a huge Brock Lesnar fan, obviously, and I'm an alright fucking Goldberg fan. I just think Goldberg is, is also an alpha male that's just kick-ass, man, and he's old school. I love that. And I know that when guys like Goldberg and Lesnar and all them are gone... Who are we going to have left for those badass old school epic characters? Undertaker and all them are gone. Nobody. There's going to be none left. So I'm going to enjoy this build. The build, Goldberg versus Lesnar. I think that's going to be really fun because on paper and at first sight, when you think Goldberg versus Brock, you think fucking epic. You think badass, right? So at least the build and the excitement will fucking be there for the build more than anything. But the match... I can already tell you what the match is going to look like. Go back to WrestleMania 20, Brock Lesnar, Bill Goldberg. Now, people are going to blame it on the fact that their minds weren't there and they were already on their way out anyway. So mentally, they were checked out of the match. I don't want to fucking hear that. What do you think is going to happen 13 years later? Do you think Goldberg is going to be moving any faster? Do you think Brock Lesnar is not, his mind still isn't on the money and what's next? No. This is going to be a weird 10-minute match at best, unless they really do like choke hold and make it drag out. Goldberg and Brock are not going to be able to work. How many uh, suplexes do you think Goldberg is going to allow Brock to really do to him at, what, 50 years old? It ain't going to happen, guys. So we're not going to see epic Brock Lesnar because Goldberg, his body can't take that. And we're not going to see an awesome match because Bill Goldberg can't put on an awesome match. And again, I like Goldberg. But we've already seen the dude's fucked up. Watch the Royal Rumble. Look at his ankles. They are so taped up. We don't even know if oxygen was hitting and blood was hitting his fucking brain during that match. He had them fucking ankles taped up hardcore. So you know his fucking knees are already shot. It looks like his ankles can't fucking take it. 
Wow, that match is going to be tragic. But at least let's enjoy the build, right? We got two months to build that motherfucker up. So we'll, we'll see what happens with it. The, the biggest thing for me as far as what the fuck did I just witness last night? That was Braun Strowman uh, and Kevin Owens. And it wasn't even the match. I liked the way they built the match up because Kevin Owens was seriously concerned that he might lose the belt last night because he was so beat up from Rumble. So I thought Owens was playing it off fucking perfectly. My problem was with when Roman Reigns, who he knew was going to come out and cost Strowman the match because Strowman cost Reigns the Universal Championship the night before at Rumble. So I was okay with Reigns coming out. The fucking problem is how the fuck did Roman Reigns beat the shit out of Braun Strowman so easily? That was the easiest I've ever seen Strowman. Reigns hit the ring. Strowman never got a move in. Like two or three Superman punches, a fucking spear to the outside. Strowman was out flat. They tried to make Strowman look like a beast uh, once Reigns hit the top of the ramp and then Strowman stands up like, I'm still alive. All right, but you just got your fucking ass whooped. Okay, everybody or most people get up after a fight. Okay, that's not who gives a fuck if you got up. You still lost the fight. You lost. You know what I mean? Nobody's going to remember a, 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 a fucking battle and go, yeah, but remember when he stood up? Okay, well, the, the dude was already gone by then. You know what I mean? And, and this is Vince McMahon. This is too much. Vince McMahon too much is putting this guy like he's a superhero. Vince, there's nothing you can do. Nobody is taking him as a legit face. Deal with it. Nobody is looking at him as, he, as if he is Superman. I honestly believe if Jesus himself came back to earth, came to this fucking land, and Jesus went up to McMahon and said, I want to work with you for one night, I honestly believe McMahon would pull him aside and go, can you put over reins? And I'm pretty sure Jesus doesn't swear or curse or use profanity, but I'm pretty sure Jesus would look at Vince and say, the fuck are you talking about? Because that is the dumbest booking from two years ago on, using Roman Reigns to just destroy everybody that could actually be something. Man, that guts under me. Now, this was not supposed to be an amplified video, but what the fuck are we witnessing every week? Just, just Roman Reigns just destroys people. And even when he loses, it, it has to be with like two or three people. Or, you know, a, an object has to be used. You know what I mean? He can never just lose one, two, three, just, just cleanly. You know what I mean? I know it's happened before, but it's really far and in between and a few and in between. Uh, that shit's gotta stop, man. I, fucking A. Braun Strowman, you were just building him, him up to be a beast. And now he just got his fucking ass whooped. Watch that back. He didn't get in a fucking shot, guys. He did not get in one fucking move. Reigns not only beat the shit out of him, but dirt, between every move, he just kind of like stood back, analyzed what he was going to do next. That's how much he beat up Strowman. The fuck are we witnessing? 1-0, take it away, dude. I'm, I'm starting to get pissed. Good old 2.0, right? Never at a loss for words. Let's get back on track to the positives, though, right? Because Raw had positives. Sami Zayn going over Chris Jericho. Now, normally, I don't ever like to see Chris Jericho getting pinned 1-2-3, but in this case, okay, Sami Zayn, right? He could use this, but I feel like we've said this many times about Zayn. I'm okay with Zayn pinning Chris Jericho, and I'm happy for him, but are they going to do something with him now? because we've seen Zayn pick up big wins over big names before, and they don't know what to do with him, or they pull back his push. You can't do that. Now's the time, he just pinned Chris Jericho. This is, I think, one of the last chances for, for Sami Zayn, or you're gonna find that Sami Zayn will be in a Dolph Ziggler type storyline later down the road, 10 years from now, right? The guy who almost could win the big one, or when he did, he didn't hold the belt for long, or something always happened injury-wise. Sami Zayn is headed down that kind of underdog for the rest of his career mode. That's not a good thing, you know what I mean? Because we've seen with Dolph, hot, cold, hot, cold. Not a good way to go about a guy like Sami Zayn. There's two different roads you can go with Zayn. He could end up being like a Bret Hart and turn out to be a legend because Bret Hart was also like Sami Zayn early on in his career. Nobody really put a lot of stock in Bret Hart. Bret Hart wasn't getting real big pushes. Started out in the tag team ranks. Um, and, and then all of a sudden they gave him these big pushes and, and actually gave him a lot of rope. And he, he, he was either going to hang himself or he was actually going to give himself a lot of slack. Bret Hart got a lot of slack, ended up turning out to be a legend. So he could go that route or you could turn him like a Dolph Ziggler and he's just going to be this underdog, hot and cold type wrestler for the rest of his career. Not good. 
Give him the push now. He just pinned Jericho. Now is the time. How about uh, the debut of Samoa Joe, right? That was the main event. As 2.0 alluded to, that was the whole reason why Jinder Mahal and Rusev took on Enzo and Cass. Because it was a downer match to get to the main event, which was just a promo, really. Uh, and a debut for Samoa Joe was the confrontation. That was the main event. But uh, I think a lot of us knew that Joe was going to end up showing up on Monday Night Raw. As Jim Ross said, it, it's more of an impact for a guy like Joe to show up on Raw than the Royal Rumble because he might get lost in the shuffle. However, I do have to respectfully disagree with Ross on this. I feel this Rumble was too hyped up for surprises that not to have Samoa Joe debut. I mean, like I told you guys, I knew Samoa Joe was ready. There was a slight ankle injury that he had, but that was not stopping him from anything. He was ready to go Sunday night at the Rumble. They just held off. This was a cool moment. Uh, it, it, was, it was done perfectly. It was exactly how I thought about it in my head when Raw started the night. Samoa Joe ending up attacking Seth Rollins. This makes perfect sense. Because I see uh, Seth Rollins and Samoa Joe going to Fastlane on March 5th. That's next Raw pay-per-view. I see them having a match before Seth Rollins and Triple H at WrestleMania. So this will start a little feud, obviously, with Joe and Rollins for Fastlane, March 5th, and then WrestleMania. Um, and, and during this Joe and Seth Rollins feud, you'll see uh, you know, Seth Rollins and Triple H's feud escalate. So I, I think it was perfectly done. I just feel you could have still had a big Joe Rollins storyline, Triple H storyline last night by still having Joe debut in the Rumble and having Joe look dominant in the Rumble because that Rumble, it was just missing that last really special piece. And, and as cool as the Ty Dillinger thing was, um, you know, that wasn't an epic Peace, you know what I mean? It was a fast, good moment, but we were missing that one huge surprise that when the rumble went off the air, we said, wow, what a fucking rumble, dude. Joe, can't, Joe debuted. You know what I mean? This was a little bit more lackluster for me. Still really cool, though. Joe finally debuted. Um, but Sunday night, I feel we got the wrong Samoan, damn it. Um, but yeah, that, that was raw, man. It was always cool. The Samoa Joe is fucking finally here. I, I see big things with Joe and big things with Joe at WrestleMania, too. It'll be cool to see after Fastlane what they do with Joe for, for Mania. So that was Monday Night Raw, guys. Fucking uh, ended with another awesome fucking segment. And the road to WrestleMania is definitely fucking on now. I'll tell you that much. Tomorrow is the SmackDown review reaction video. So catch that this Thursday. You just made the list. You got to catch that. It's going to be lit. For now, guys, life is a series of hellos and goodbyes. Unfortunately, it's time for goodbye. So long, my friends. Check you later.